I know the thumbnail is extreme, but stick with me. This is so important. I messed up big time. And I want to talk about it in this video, so stick around and watch the entire video. I'm going to talk about systems, okay? In our business, we have systems, and we have those systems so they're easy to teach to other people. But we also have those systems so when we go on a job, we have the exact remedy for the problem that the client has, right? So in these fish rooms, we should have systems. We should go to the same thing that works over and over again and stuff that doesn't work, we make sure that we tweak a little bit until we find what works. Now, you all know I do a 90 day quarantine. I broke my rule um, and totally my fault. I screwed up big time. But I bought these Myrtle Discus and I bought them before and they're with my young breeders. So I've mixed them, but I stuck with my 90 day quarantine. These guys went in in 30 days. Now I was gonna medicate, right? And I was gonna just put them together and I thought I was gonna be all slick and put them together and medicate and, you know, take care, kill two birds with one stone. Well, I woke up this morning and of course, my four biggest discus from the Coupe which were all breeders, good four and a half inch, four month, five month old discus, all dead. If you look in this tank, and now how I can tell that these, these discus brought this in. Not an issue because if they would have stayed in quarantine like they were supposed to with the system I have, this would not have been an issue. But the four fish that are eating are the myrtles. The rest of the fish are kind of listless and there's bacteria in there that they're not used to. So they have taken a hit like this guy right here. You can see he's spread out, but he's peeling hard. One fish in here I can just tell because the Fins start getting scalloped and they get this weird white and brown on them and you can kind of just tell that they're not going to make it. I'd be surprised if any of my discs gets made in here. So what I've done with this is I've, now this is going to sound extreme unless you are comfortable with this, but I've put salt, my salt in here at one tablespoon per five gallons. Sounds like a lot, but really it's not a lot of salt. Discus can handle it no problem. What I do worry about is my bristle nose, but they're going to have to deal with it. Um, they're, they tend to be a little more sensitive to the salt. But ever since I put the uh, salt in, they've kind of straightened up. They're still tilting a little, and that's a, usually a bacterial issue pressing against the swim bladder. That is a big mistake on my part. It's going to cost me uh, future breeders. My best breeders are gone, so they're done. Uh, all the myrtles are looking good and they're actually eating, but I'm not putting any food in this tank until Sunday. I'm just going to let it ride with the salt, okay? Now, why wouldn't I just start putting a bunch of meds in there, right? Like antibiotics. The reason why is this is a bacterial issue, obviously. They brought in a bacteria that my discus aren't used to. And eventually they're going to have to get used to that bacteria and hopefully we can break that down with the salt. So the, the bacteria is not much on the outside. There is a little, and that's how I noticed by the dead fish, I could see their scallop fins where the bacteria was starting to eat at them. So that's internal. So that's why they are in the salt uh, and not medications, right? Uh, at this point, I'll, I, I'm trying to keep the stress down and actually the salt is proven to relax them. So what I'm hoping for is that salt will eat, eat at that bacteria and relax these fish. Now. Totally my fault, I know better, okay? But I just wanna give this lesson to you guys. When you bring in new fish, don't start mixing them right away. Yes, you can mix, mix discus all day long from different sources. But I would say definitely do a, a 60 to 90. This is why I do a 90 day uh, quarantine. And this is why I'm paying the price right now because I don't listen and, and I know better and I know my system and I jacked it, okay? And uh, not only am I paying the price, but the fish are paying the price. You know, whether these fish are, oh, this is the guy right here. He's probably not gonna make it. If you look at him, when they start spreading like that, that's usually a good sign, but that's also a sign of stress. But they all kind of have that going on right now. But well, this guy's a little more tough. Oh, this might be the guy too, I don't know. But earlier I was looking at him, I could tell one of them was gonna go. I'd be surprised if any of my discus made it, right? Uh, I'm almost confident that all the myrtles will make it because uh, they 
they're eating, they're healthy, they look good, they're moving correctly. So that tells me that they brought that bacteria in. All right, so the question I'm getting with my meds is, should I pre-treat or not? I can't answer that question. That is totally up to you. If you want to pre-treat, that's fine. Um, do I recommend it? For me, the reason why I do it and the reason why I would recommend it for someone like, like what I'm doing is because I'm breeding fish, right? It's important that when I put two fish into a tank to breed, that they're 100% healthy. They have no flukes, they have no parasites, because you've heard about the 30, 60, 90 day syndrome with uh, baby discus. It's usually caused by a parasite or flukes, right? So it's so important for me to have my discus healthy when they go into a breeding tank. I can raise the fry and not be worried about anything happening to them as far as, uh, you know, a parasite or a fluke or something taking out my whole group. So that's why I do it. Now, should you do it? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. That's not why I made this channel to tell you what to do. I made this channel to kind of show what I do, the good and the bad, right? So I could easily just took this and hit it and said, no, everything's fine. We're honky dory. I'm perfect. But, you know, sometimes we do stuff for so long, we get so confident and we get so cocky and our ego takes over and we think we got this and we can handle it and we're gonna be, you know, nothing can really beat us, right? Well, humble pie right here, okay? I'm paying big time on this one, uh, but it's, a, it's actually a perfect learning experience for you guys. I want you to, whether you're experienced or not, really be careful about mixing discus from different sources without putting them through a, a long period quarantine. Now, you look at these myrtle discus and they look healthy, right? They look perfectly great. Their, 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 their eyes are shiny, their fins are open, they're, uh, you know, they're swimming around normal, they're eating. So to me, that would be like, oh, that fish is ready to go, right? And it got me, right? Because I, I didn't even think about the bacteria and I know about uh, bacteria strains. So, did I learn something? I learned that I'm an idiot and I freaking did something that I know better, right? So that's why I'm making this video. I want you guys to understand that it's never, it's never rush, never rush to get into something, right? Take your time, all right? So as far as the meds, should you treat? That's gonna be your decision. But here's another thing that I know from keeping fish forever about medicines. You always need them when you can't get them. That's why I made the kit. So it, even if you don't use it right away and you stick it in the fridge and you keep those medicines nice and uh, solid and healthy and ready to go for when you need it, it's there. So Sunday night, nine o'clock, you see a problem. You can't get no meds from the fish store. You have to order. It's going to take four or five days to get there because it's on the weekend, right? So it's about being prepared with the meds, all right? So I can't answer the question, should you pre-treat? That's something you will have to decide. Um, I would never take, you know, as far as being that arrogant and saying that you should, right? Because everyone's different, every situation's different, every tank is different. Some people have catfish in their tank that can't handle meds. So, you know, some people don't do a lot of water changes, have ultra, or the UV uh, filtration, they have, you know, two FX6s stuff like that so every situation is different I do it because it's profitable for me to have healthy fish and that's kind of just one of those things for me is I don't ever want to send out unhealthy fish to the market that's just something that uh, I personally have made you know a commitment to myself that I only sell healthy fish if a fish has got any questions as far as health or not it doesn't go out it goes into quarantine okay so I know the quarantine thing is kind of an issue on YouTube as far as, oh, I only do two weeks and I only do a month and I only do 60 days. Fine, do it, right? But this confirms to me that I'm going back to my 90 day, which I should have done at the beginning, but um, I was trying to move things along. You know, these are future readers. Now, will these be future readers now? I don't know. So I won't know for another week. So this is uh, about day 
day two on this that this has been happening. And when I came in this morning and saw my big ones all dead, and it's the strangest thing because the big ones took the hit first. I don't know if because they had such big size that the bacteria attacked them first or whatever, but I instantly did a water change and then I did the salt treatment. So they're gonna sit in the salt until Sunday, one to five. Now, that's, that's totally, I've done one to one, one tablespoon to one gallon with this gets in there fine. Uh, I, I prefer one to three as low as you go. One tablespoon of salt to three gallons of water. That's the minimum. I wouldn't go any lower than that, but I've done one to one extreme cases, all right? I just want to make this video for you guys. Meds are on the website, shellerproducts.com. You can check them out. Uh, interested, I've been selling a lot of them. Uh, everything's been tested, so all those meds are fully tested two years. Thousand fish, maybe. I don't know, I've tested them all on, so everything works real well. It's frustrating, okay? I'm a fish keeper, just like you're a fish keeper. I make a lot less mistakes than I used to because I didn't know, but now I know and I still make stupid mistakes. All right, so a quick 24 hour update. Um, I bumped the salt down to one to three, so one tablespoon to three gallons because I was noticing improvement. So it looks like all these are gonna make it. I have lost a total of six, six, six of my coupe are gone. Um, brutal, heartbreaking. Uh, they were all my biggest ones, all good breeders. I mean, these are still good ones, but I don't know if, you know, if they're gonna be breeders or not. That's something we'll see. But I just wanna make a quick update. Some things have been happening in my life that have just been a little crazy lately. Last night, we, our sewer backed up in our basement, which is where I'm at right now. So I spent all night cleaning up this, the sewer water. Luckily, the drains were just clogged, and so we got, we're gonna have those uh, jetted on Monday. It's been a rough week, okay? And that's kind of why I, I just kind of let this slip away. If I was paying attention, would have got on this sooner and I probably would have had better success with my salt. Now my salt, I specifically made for this. It's not aquarium salt. It mimics more of a ocean salt or a sea salt with trace elements. What I find is they do better with that salt as far as killing bacteria. But not just that, freshwater parasites can't live in salt water. Now we're not getting it nowhere to salt water. So even a one to three uh, ratio is nothing close to seawater. So that's not what we're doing. So it's not a way to kill parasites, but I believe it does dehydrate them. And I, I definitely know it uh, inhibits bacteria and fungus, and this is proof right here. These guys were goners, right? And luckily I got to in enough time uh, where I'm gonna say there'll be eight total, so four of the myrtles and four of the coupe Now I still have about a hundred of the coupe and I can go through those and hopefully pick out some nice ones, but these guys that I had were the nicest ones, and they all come from the same genetics, so I can still breed them and still get good quality discus. But you're always trying to find the best of the best of the best to breed. Just a quick update on this, and uh, I just want to thank you guys for everything you're buying. It has made such a huge difference and given me confidence that this could actually work. Um, and it, I just appreciate it so much. Uh, you know, two years of my life was spent getting ready and testing and testing and testing. It was a lot of, lot of man hours to make this stuff work. So I'm just so grateful for you guys, and I just I appreciate it. And that's about it for now, and uh, I'll keep you updated on how this goes, but it looks like we're gonna have eight total on these guys, four of the Myrtles and four of my coupon. All right guys, take care, bye.